Hello and welcome back to another video, I'm Zelp and today we are kind of doing a revision for yesterday's video. So, so far no one has kind of complained much. Uh, you guys like the idea of having it structured the way that I did and having a condition where it's a lot more controlled so that you don't have too many variables in it. But there are certain variables that I feel like it's fairly important that I did not include in yesterday's video. And one is hit point modifiers and if you don't know what that is it's also sort of like known as health modifiers and they are basically like resistance towards certain damage types now one of the reasons why i did not want to include those is that things will get really complicated and let's say if i were to do it based off of ferrite armor which is like the lancers butchers heavy gunners then uh we will still need a separate one for alloy armor um, but at the end, the more I think about it, I feel like there is a way around it. So I revised the entire spreadsheet to try and make it even more accurate. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that 100 damage that you have to do to the 10k health pool. Like we talked in yesterday's video. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's really important that you check out that video by the way. Uh, so that you can get into par with what we're trying to discuss here. Um, and we're going to see how many hits it takes to kill the enemy with purely viral uh, 100 damage and also purely corrosive 100 damage and i'm also going to include both fire armor and also alloy armor in this particular spreadsheet this time so the modifications that I did to the spreadsheet is pretty easy the number of hits is really just the uh, total amount of health which is 10k and then it divides by the damage that you deal after a specific buff let's say from viral or after a debuff on the enemy's part due to their armor reduction uh, i mean armor damage reduction so technically you can still get a certain amount of damage that you deal after those reduction so i start by adding new columns and i named them um, um, damage new so we have the first one which is the control damage new number one and this basically has nothing to do with anything if it's not viral if it's not corrosive but if it's purely just skilling to the enemy's armor now the next part is called damage new 2 this is when the 100 damage that you're dealing is viral now viral against grenier's is really interesting because all grenier's has clone flesh this means that if you look at the table, Clone Flash actually takes an extra 75% from Viral. Now one thing I realized that still not many people know this is um, although Grenier has armor, it still suffers from hit point modifiers like the things that is dealt to their Clone Flash. So it's not purely let's say if the Grenier is a heavy, heavy gunner, it doesn't just focus on these limitation now if you like to learn more about calculating damage i have a really old video back in february 2017 that i made uh, i'm gonna put the link down in the description if you're interested anyways let's carry on so since viral damage is going to increase by 75 percent so what i basically did is i find out how much damage it will do if it's a max proc viral and then i increase that damage by an extra 75 percent and therefore i have damage new too and what i really need to do next is i take the maximum amount of health they has which is 10k divide by this new damage and we know how many times we need to hit and it's a lot lesser than it was in yesterday's video so right now you can see it only takes about 15 hits to kill the enemy now next when you come over to corrosive side we have to distribute those into two parts. One is when you deal corrosive damage to ferrite armor, and another is when you deal corrosive damage to alloy armor, because those are the two major armor types in the game. Now, if it's a ferrite armor, it will suffer from an extra 75% damage. Now, to say that I do an extra 75% damage is actually wrong. For ferrite armor and alloy armor, the armor types what the uh, values here actually means is that you negate 75% of their armor. So for example, if they have 100 armor um, and I'm using corrosive, I only have to deal with 25 of their armor instead of 100 because I remove 
75% uh, of it. So the damage that I deal on a ferret armor has to take their armor value, I have to reduce it by an extra 75%, and then after that I need to find out how much uh, damage reduction is done with the remaining armor that is available, and then calculate my final damage. So it's a little bit more tedious, but nevertheless, it's not that hard to do. So all I kind of need to do here is that since it's a maxed out corrosive proc, uh, we need to first reduce its armor by 80%. And then after that, we reduce it again by 75% due to that um, armor multiplier. Now, the only thing that I'm not 100% sure is uh, because I haven't checked it, uh, which I will, but not today because uh, I don't really have much time left, is how do they stack um, the uh, resistance, the one that we talked about, the armor multiplier, and the corrosive effect uh, armor reduction. Now, I feel like it has to be multiplied because it cannot, it cannot be additive because if that's the case, we'll see enemy's armor going to zero right away. So this way it actually doesn't go to zero. So it makes all the logic in the world that the way they stack has to be after you reduce one, then you reduce it again by another fold. So the last step as mentioned is I gather how much damage I'll be doing after all that armor reduction and then take uh, 10,000, which is the health, divide by how much damage you'll be doing and it comes down to about 100 Point eight or 101 hits for fire armor and then it keeps going down now for alloy is really the exact same thing as yesterday's video uh, where we did not differentiate between ferrite or alloy or the fact that we made it into a corrosive damage simply because corrosive does not do anything to alloy armor other than the corrosive proc that actually reduces it by up to 80% so the final verdict, if you're dealing purely viral damage and you're competing with something that does purely corrosive damage and you take into account the uh, status proc at max and you also take into account that there is sort of like natural resistance which is the hit point modifiers and also the, uh, the armor modifier or multipliers, then you'll come down to a conclusion that viral is going to be king up to the point, basically a turning point, where Corrosive actually starts winning when the enemy has 3.45k armor. But since Corrosive is only good against Ferret armor, you'll realize that if it's in terms of alloy, then Viral will still be in the lead. In fact, uh, in my current list, where the enemy's armor can go all the way up to uh, 22.7k viral is still going to win against alloy armor it's just because of the uh, clone flesh having a weakness against viral and also because corrosive has no advantage over alloy armor besides the uh, the effect the status effect buff now just to make a simple comparison without actually doing any extra uh, calculation a lancer at level 155 will have about 2k armor so you can actually deal damage to any lancer or butcher lancer and below you know armor types they will not scale more than this value so against them viral will always be better there is also a part where it comes down to convenience because both alloyed armor uh, grenades and also ferret armor grenades have um, a weakness to viral so having viral just is just better in the sense that you don't have to keep changing what else corrosive only gives you that added benefit if you're fighting against enemies with fair armor okay so that is pretty much it for today's video in conclusion if you're fighting against an alloyed armor enemy uh, viral is definitely the way to go corrosive seems to would have never catch up uh, even up to you know 22.7 K armor but if you're fighting against a ferret armor enemy then uh, corrosive will actually start winning if you reach to the point where its armor value is higher than 3.45 K 
The last thing that I want to say, which I also mentioned in the last video, is that there are, can still be other factors that will affect uh, you know, when the turning point is between viral and also corrosive. It really depends on the situation, like for example, um, other status procs like bleed or heat may actually turn the ties between them. Like if you were to rock, let's say, um, slash procs and viral, you might actually get a better results than having um, corrosive and slash. Simply because with the uh, bleed proc um, negating armor, you kind of have the best of both worlds. So you have the damage buff and you also ignore the armor. Now there's still a lot of things to be exploring and I do not intend to be, you know, facing a spreadsheet every single time I make a video. So we will also try to be a little bit more practical and go into games or even uh, test things at the Slimmeracrum instead of just using numbers. Let me know what you guys think of today's video and also if you think that this is actually a better way to be figuring things out. If you want to see more, let me know down in the comments as well. We still have things, you know, with the current state of shields and all the shield gating um, and a lot more to talk about. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.